Penis, 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 penis. Ah! Oh, my little pretty one, I touch myself, I touch myself, and everywhere I look, I always find myself, I call myself shaving. Perverts. They're horrible in real life, but we love them in cartoons. Oh, As part of the Patreon review raffle, the winner, Gonzo Lude, has requested top 10 perverts, and I'm ranking these on who's the least horrible person, but somehow still likable. If that makes any sense whatsoever, it's juice and jam time. Look at me, buddy. Look at it. Look at it. We can spend the rest of our lives making love. We shall flee to Capri. Beheld, the first animated pervert that anyone remembers. 1945's Pepe Le Pew from Looney Tunes. The French caricature who wants to fuck a cat he thinks is a skunk, but no one wants to fuck him because he smells and he has no concept of the meaning of no. It's an interspecies molester who shits himself. You're looking at fucking animation history. You may ponder, why isn't Pepe closer to number one for his historical significance? Because we want him to lose. You're a creep! Go away! We're having a good time until you shut up, jeepers! <sighs> so Pepe's character trait is that he's French, but what happens when Looney Tunes broadcasts in France? They change him to Italian. All of you, le vous dîner chez vous, oh oh. Et c'est très joli le rendez-vous. I do hope nothing happens to spoil this fancy dinner party. <gasps> Who else but Quagmire? That's a good question indeed. Who else but Quagmire, huh? Who the fuck else but Quagmire? Who the fuck did you think I was gonna put on the list? Was there someone else? 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 <laughs> a peek at your, uh, underwear. Uh, uh, bloody old man! Oh shit, bro, we gotta fight Frieza in ten minutes. What are we gonna do? Call up Master Roshi. Who's more powerful than Goku? Theoretically, the guy who trained him. True, Goku has no time for women, but when you're retired, Roshi has all the time for that. Master Roshi, this is not appropriate conduct. This is you. This is gonna be all of you. You're all gonna be that creepy old man harassing the old nurses in the old folks' home. Eh? Get off my case, turtle! You think it's easy living on an island with nothing but the boob tube? I was wondering, since I'm new in town, maybe we could get together tonight and you could show me around. Well, I'm not off duty till past your bedtime. And I might even have to work round the clock to catch these burglars. In the patriarchal child abandonment free healthcare society of Pokemon, certain women are forced to work in the family business and dress the exact same. You want to be a cartoonist? Too bad. Your name is Joy and you have to be a nurse. Now put on the outfit. That electric pink suits you perfectly and you certainly look lovely. <laughs> Whoa. But the man, the legend, Dwayne the Brock Johnson knows these women so well, he can distinguish them from each other. It's terrifying. So why isn't Brock higher on this list for his commitment? Did you play Pokemon Yellow? You start off with Electric type and it's useless against Rock types, which is what Brock has as the first gym leader. So the game got progressively easier after that. That is bullshit. Jesus, you always have to fuck up everything, don't you? Look at your toilet. Look at your bathtub. Look at what you put in your mouth and I'm not just talking about dick. You're nothing but a filthy hoe bagging thief. Riddle me this, Batman. Why is this thing sucks dick an insult? Doesn't everyone want a blowjob? The Fallen Angel Panty Anarchy from Panty and Stocking and Garter Belt is a proud cock gobbler and doesn't care what anyone thinks. When it comes to fighting demons, Panty Anarchy uses the very thing she's named after as weapons. Get it over with. Girl, you ain't gonna tell me twice. Bring it! Let's do this! Panty would get a better ranking on this top 10, though her sister Stocking is the superior angel. Why is that? Goth girls. I know and Matt says she plays some weird Siddhar, the Zither it's called. Oh, not another one of your hopeless goth girl fixations. 
I bet you haven't even talked to her. Look at this desperate nerd thirsty for some goth girls. I'm glad I'm not that much of a fucking loser. From the obscure 13 episode romp MTV's Downtown, Alex is the more relatable perv on this list. He's that friend who wants to score and you must constantly hear about his struggle to do so. I mean, I had it fat back home, no rent. No responsibilities, all the chicken rolls I could eat. No sex, no self-esteem, no hope of ever leading a normal life, no going to the sex. bathroom. Yeah, sure you did. His bestie Jen bickers with Alex for just that. They really have good chemistry. MTV's Downtown was a unique animated show containing unscripted conversations, making the banter authentic. Well, it may not be pretty, but at least now you won't have to worry about mom interrupting your personal time in the bathroom. Yeah, that's true. Wait. What you know about that? If a cute girl like her wore panties that cute, if I were her boyfriend... Makochi? I totally have a boner all the time. Makochi? While Alex of Downtown is relatable, Tomoko from Watamote is a symbol of social anxiety. She's lonely, can barely communicate, and will try anything from purposely wanting to be harassed on the train to coming on to her own brother. Your sister's in her school uniform. What's your point exactly? Makes you excited, huh? No way, man. It hurts. This show hurts. Hey, where's the instant ramen that was in my room? Obviously I ate it! I'll kill you! You want to cringe and can stomach 13 episodes? The anime Watamote is an endurance test on, oh god, that's totally me. Will you be eating here to go? Yes, I am here. Pardon? Gif! Yes, Captain? I have made it with a woman. Inform the men. Now, going with the flow is where it's at. And that's the deadly way to live. Space Dandy, Zap Rannigan, and for the special case, the video game character, Blasto. All three? womanizers in space. Hey, baby! I'm not just saving you because you're gorgeous, you know. Earth girls are easy, so you want to boldly hoe where no hoe has gone before. Coincidentally enough, Blasto was voiced by the late SNL star Phil Hartman. Multiple generations will recognize him as Troy McClure from The Simpsons. You might remember me from such driver's ed films as Alice's Adventures Through the Windshield Glass and The Decapitation of Larry Leadfoot. Futurama's Zap Brannigan was written specifically for Phil Hartman before his death. Upon learning this, I can't unhear Zap's voice actor, Billy West, channeling Phil Hartman. However, I did make it with a hot alien babe. And in the end, is that not what man has dreamt of since first he looked up at the stars? Kip, I'm asking you a question. Are you two heading for Las Vegas? I'm mostly gonna be doing the slots. Yeah, I'm hoping to do some sluts, too. A good cartoon character means you can put them in any story or concept, and it'll work. Beavis and Butthead watch TV, want to score, that's it. Nothing is more apparent of this than Beavis and Butthead do America the movie. Uh, can we watch some TV first? <laughs> No. Somehow, these two end up in a big government thriller story. It's almost like they walked into someone else's film. Are the two idiots pitching in to save the world? No, they're just wandering around, trying to find a TV, hoping to score, while unknowingly interfering with the plot. That's why this movie works. It's Beavis and Butthead just being themselves. Do they have a lot of sluts in Las Vegas? Oh, there's so many sluts who won't know where to begin. <laughs> Honorable mentions! There can only be 10, so here's the stuff that didn't quite make it. Oh, great Athena, we give you this virgin as a sacrifice to your beauty and womanhood! Did she say virgin? One, two, three, go! Way there. Come on, what did you expect? Johnny the Blowjob Bravo. He's the only contender on the list, as far as I remember, that gets his comeuppance <laughs> repeatedly. In one episode, after he's transformed into a woman with a mullet, he faces the very street harassment he's been dishing out and learns a lesson. Do these jerks think just because we're totally hot, it's open season to be completely annoying? But to keep the series going a few more episodes, he immediately forgets it. <laughs> when you think about it, we can see who Johnny truly is. A sad, sad man living with his mother, his only friend, a guy at a diner. 
Tom Kenny, and a five-year-old. Here lies Bravo. He never scored. Oh, man. It's gonna be a long winter. Don't you want a rematch? Oh, I'm him. And I'm the red guy. And I'm seriously creeped out. Stay tuned for more Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. <laughs> you know, I think we could host Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Oh, I know. That's really going to happen. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs>